Hello and welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy and I'm so excited to paint with you today. So today we are going to be just doing some practice work. Uh, this is a great lesson, especially for brand new folks to watercolor who are just learning their paints and learning their tools. I'm gonna make some whimsical, fake, made up flowers. So these aren't based off of any particular flower in particular just the idea of flowers with petals and stems, um, but we're gonna use fanciful colors and uh, get to know our brushes and tools a little bit better. So this is a great exercise you can do with whatever you have. You don't have to use what I'm using, but I'm gonna use a size 12 silver black velvet brush. This brush holds a lot of water and paint, so that is great in some situations, but presents its own challenges in others. I'm using my Core Palette QOR by Golden, um, and I'm gonna use a whole bunch of colors, whatever I have in my palette. I have the, one, two, three, four, five, the 24 color palette here, um, but a whole bunch of different colors in there. Whatever you have on hand would be great. Some water, a paper towel, and my very last page, so this is it, this is the last, that's the end cap page of my Baohong sketchbook. It is 100% cotton, 140 pound cold press. So if you like my videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, I love to hear comments from y'all. And uh, feel free to share with someone who you also think might like to learn something about watercolor. So watercolor, um, is a transparent medium, meaning you're always gonna kind of see the layer before whatever you put on top of it. Uh, so you have to paint a little differently. And there's lots of different colors and how we change the value or the darkness or lightness of a color is with water, not with white paint. So for instance, this is my sap green and I've added water to it, but now if I add more paint or pigment to it, it becomes darker versus more water, it becomes lighter. So here, I'll just give you an example. I'm gonna put some, whoops, I've already dripped on here. I'm gonna put some stems and leaves. I'm gonna use the tip of my brush. So with our brushes, with a round brush, you have the tip and the belly of the brush. All the water and paint is held in the belly of the brush and the tip can be used for making fine lines or details and the more pressure you put on the brush, the thicker or fatter the line gets. So very little pressure, high up on the tip, vertical hold, very thin lines, and then fatter, more pressure, thick lines. So you can make leaves and stems, leaves and stems, petals, um, texture, all kinds of things. So I am just throwing down some leaves and stems and we can do thicker stems with more pressure. So you can see lighter value, darker value, same color, just more water, less water. And we can do some smaller little leaves. I don't, I don't have as much control. The Silver Black Velvet brush is a natural hair brush. It does not have as much snap to it um, as a synthetic brush, which are a little bit snappier usually. So I actually struggle with some of my leaves with this because I lift up too quickly. But I love this brush for lots of other things. All right, so some leaves, some stems. Let's throw in some flowers, but they're going to be like I said, fanciful. Let's use our three primary colors. I'm gonna use some magenta. I, uh, maybe. I'm gonna use some phthalo. I have cobalt here, or maybe I'll use cobalt. Or I'm sorry, cerulean. This is a cerulean blue. It's a little bit grayer blue. And some yellow we'll pull out over here. Okay, so our three primary colors, red, blue, yellow, or magenta. Cerulean and Diorolite Yellow. Um, I'm just gonna start putting on, so using the whole shape of my brush, you can see, I'm not doing anything special, just one stroke each. There we go. So these are big. 
And I'm going to add more colors to these. And we'll talk a little bit about the transparency and overlapping. So I could make these dark, dark pink magenta by just adding lots more paint, but I'm adding water and making them lighter. This one I added a little bit more to. This one is still wet, so if I drop water, or I'm sorry, paint into the base of it, because there's already water still in there, you can see it starts to blend out and bleed up into the rest of it. It wasn't very, very wet, so I'm gonna give it a little help. Just pushing it along ever so slightly. There we go. Now we have some variation in color there. All right, I'm gonna pick up some of my blue. So this is a cerulean. I'm gonna do the same brush strokes over top. And you can see how I get different color variations. I get blue here, but purple or purplish color where they overlap each other. So these are fun. And this one's still a little wet, so I'm assuming they're gonna blend even a little bit more. And I'm just trying to put these strokes like somewhat in between. I wonder what's, we're gonna add some yellow too. Ah, and see what happens. So you can wait till things are dry and you'll get a different effect than if you do it when they're wet. So let's see, we're gonna go right on top of this one. This one's still wet. This one's on its way to dry, so maybe I'll wait to do dry, wet on dry over that. So just adding some yellow gives it some interesting dimension. You can see some areas are overlapping and creating some tones of greens and grays when you mix all three primary colors. This one is wet as well. But my blue is very, very light. So I'm getting more orangey because I use a lot more magenta. And this one is almost dry. I'm gonna let it dry completely. We'll go down here and play some in this area. So let's do, here I have pulled out some phthalo blue, some magenta, make a purpley color. Down here I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some water on my page in kind of the shape of a flower, like a, petal fly you'll see it in a minute you can't really see it with the water but I'm gonna drop just paint right in the base of it and the wet on wet technique is just pulling that paint up into the petal and it'll continue to work for a while as that dries so I can just leave it alone and see what happens and then if I want to add more to it later I certainly can one's even more blue. And up here, let's do, actually I'm gonna add some pink or magenta to the base of this. I already added the blue, and then I'm adding the pink later, and we'll see what we get. We're gonna get some mixing, we're gonna get some purple tones, little tie-dye flowers there. Let's scoot you up so you can see. These are very wet. I'm gonna just pull out a tiny little bit of water because there's like little puddles there. Keep it wet so they can still do their wet on wet thing. Let's add some more blue. Oh, this is gonna be a lot. I picked up a lot. <laughs> there we go. Little tie-dye flowers. You will not most likely see these out in the wild and that's okay. All right, this one up here is dry now, so let's add some of that. Same shape, but in yellow over top. So you can just see it's a little bit, um, they don't blend as much, a little harsher lines, uh, but you can get more distinct colors when you do wait for it to dry and don't let them mix wet on wet at all. All right, I'm gonna take some of my sap green. I'm gonna put it right at the base here. So this is the bottom of the stem of these. I 
Okay, our little flowers down here have dried. I took a little bit of a break because I had to go take care of something and now I'm back, everything is dry and we can keep on going. All right, I'm gonna put in some, I'm gonna get some phthalo blue. I'm gonna put a little magenta with it to just purple it up a little bit. All right, I'm gonna do some just splotches over here. So I guess these would be reminiscent of like some kind of big, um, like a hydrangea or a lilac or, you know, a big bunch, a big kind of ball flower with lots of little flowers on it. And I'm just gonna mess these up in between. So I put paint on and then I rinsed my brush off. I had no paint on my brush and I'm just kind of using what's already there to spread it out a little. You could drop a few little water droplets in here. I go right up to the seam. And then while it's still wet, I could take more color and drop it in in a few spots. My book is a little slanted because it's the last page, so it's in the crease. So then we're getting these like depth. We're creating depth and contrast, which I think is great. We could totally go back and do that on here. Let's put in, I'm gonna go with the yellow and magenta. I'm gonna make like an And I am just going to do an even darker layer. And you don't even have to go all the way down. I can go between. Pick up some of this blue. Might be getting carried away now. That's all right. That's what these fun exercises are for. There are no rules. We're just trying to make something fun and interesting and learn a little bit about our materials as we go. So we have three very different uh, flowers here. This one, let's add some yellow to it. Ooh, look at that dark. So it's saturated and it's vibrant, but a totally different color palette. So it's very orange. All right, and then we can add more green. I'm gonna add some green to the bases of these. Let's do like downward strokes, kind of like the opposite of the flower. So and then we can add to the stems and the leaves. And this guy, we're gonna give you a big chunky stem. It's gonna go over. And you can change your greens. So let's mix with our phthalo blue, our sap green. We'll get a whole different range of green here. Got a whole little jungle of flowers going on. So I think I'm gonna take this idea and put it down here a little bit and call it a day just to balance it out. Cause we have these three big pieces here and we're feeling really top heavy and I could definitely add more foliage down here, but I think I'm just gonna actually kind of put in behind the scenes. So I'm gonna try to tuck it behind. So I'm just adding pretty much dirty water back here. Just splotches of dirty water. And now I'm gonna take this blue. So that was phthalo blue and I added a little magenta to it to 
purple it up a little bit and add a little water. So, and this is a little bit of a darker hue or a darker um, color. So doing my best to go kind of around the leaves and stems, but I can always go back over them later. And I have this one big drip right there. And you can even pull out color where it got too dark. And let's put in some darker drops. I could even do magenta, like more purple in this one if I wanted. Woo! So sometimes it's just when you don't know what to paint, it's fun to just play. I'm gonna put some big juicy leaves down here. An experiment. And here I'm gonna add green and thalo and make this really dark green. And I'm gonna do a big, almost like fern-like leaf right here in the center. Boop, boop, boop. Coming out from all angles here. All right, I'm gonna call it a day. That was fun. This looks dreamy and fun. Our made up flowers, leaves, stems. It looks floral. We played with color. We had a lot of fun. And sometimes that's all you need to do. Have a an experimental page where you just kind of go at it, mix with colors, learn your tools, practice different techniques, wet on wet, wet on dry, dry brushing, dropping in color, mixing colors in a palette you normally wouldn't do, layering, yada, 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 the whole nine yards. So thank you for painting with me today. My name is Shana Searcy. I'm always happy to, and excited to paint with you. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the description for links to supplies and materials and to my studio crew as well as my social media accounts. All right, everybody, take care. Happy painting.